Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn to explain how water acts as a solvent, to explain the solubility of ionic and covalent compounds in terms of hydration, three, explain what is meant by strong, weak and non-electrolytes. Many of the chemical reactions that we perform in the lab occur in a solution. For example, a reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride and water occurs in its dissolved form. Hydrochloric acid dissolved in water is mixed with sodium hydroxide dissolved in water and they react with each other with water as a medium for the reaction to form sodium chloride and water. The mixture of HCl and water or NaOH and water are called solutions. A solution is defined as a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. The substance present in a smaller amount is called a solute and the substance present in a larger amount is called the solvent. In the above solutions, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide are the solutes and water is the solvent for both. Water is capable of dissolving a wide variety of substances and because of this ability, it is sometimes referred to as a universal solvent. In fact, most of the chemical reactions that are important to life occur in water inside the cells and water often plays an active role in the reactions itself. So what makes water such a good solvent? We discussed in the earlier videos that the individual bonds on the water molecule are polar and because of its asymmetric shape which is the bent shape water molecule has net polarity. In addition, there are hydrogen atoms directly connected to oxygen atom in the molecular structure of water. Therefore, it can form hydrogen bonding. These two qualities, that is the polar nature and its ability to form hydrogen bonds, makes water an excellent solvent. Even though water dissolves a wide variety of substances, these substances fall into two broad categories, polar substances and ionic substances. Water uses different types of interactions to dissolve ionic and polar substances. We will discuss these interactions in the next slide. We all know that the table salt, sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound, dissolves in water. For sodium chloride to dissolve in water, there should be forces of attraction between the solute particles, that is NaCl, and the solvent particles, that is water. Let us see what happens when sodium chloride is dissolved in water. As the sodium chloride dissolves, it breaks apart into Na plus and Cl minus. The positively charged Na plus ions are attracted to the partial negative ends of water molecule, that is oxygen atoms, and the negatively charged Cl minus ions are attracted to the partial positive ends of the water molecules, that is hydrogen atoms. This process is called hydration or solvation if any other solvent is used. These electrostatic forces of attraction between the solute particles and the solvent particles dissolve the sodium chloride in water. We have to keep in mind that not all ionic substances are soluble in water and the solubility of ionic substances varies greatly in water. For example, if we take sodium chloride, 
we can dissolve around 357 grams of sodium chloride in a liter of water at 25 degrees Celsius. However, if we take silver chloride, we can only dissolve 2 times 10 to the negative 3 grams, that is 2 milligrams, in a liter of water at 25 degrees Celsius. Now, why is sodium chloride more soluble than silver chloride? It is because the attraction between the Ag plus and Cl minus ions is greater than the attraction between the individual ions that is Ag plus and Cl minus with the water molecules. Now we will discuss how polar compounds are dissolved in water. Water also dissolves many non-ionic or covalent compounds. Example, table sugar, ethyl alcohol, and antifreeze. The forces of attraction between the solute and solvent particles are intermolecular hydrogen bondings. All these molecules mentioned above have at least one hydrogen atom directly connected to an oxygen atom which can form intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water molecules. These strong intermolecular forces of attraction dissolve these polar molecules in water. Based on how well the solutions conduct electricity, they are classified into three types strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolytes. Strong electrolytes conduct electricity very well. Strong electrolytes, when dissolved in water, break apart, that is, dissociate completely. The ions produced upon dissociation act as charge carriers and conduct electricity. Examples of strong electrolytes include soluble ionic compounds, strong acids, and strong bases. The strong acids and bases have almost 100% dissociation. For example, if we take one mole of hydrochloric acid and dissolve in water, it breaks apart to produce one mole of H plus and one mole of Cl minus. These H plus and Cl minus ions carry the charge and conduct the electricity. Weak electrolytes do not conduct electricity very well. Weak electrolytes, when dissolved in water, produce relatively fewer number of ions. Therefore, don't conduct electricity well. Examples of weak electrolytes are less soluble ionic compounds such as silver chloride as we discussed earlier. Some other examples include weak acids and weak bases. For a weak acid such as acetic acid, around 1% of its molecules dissociate in aqueous solution. The remaining 99% stay undissociated. Therefore, the solution of acetic acid weakly conduct electricity. Next, non-electrolytes. Non-electrolytes do not conduct electricity at all. These substances dissolve in water but do not produce ions. Therefore, they do not conduct electricity. Examples of weak electrolytes are sucrose, that is table sugar, ethanol, etc.